face and sand She ain't good looking and she don't dress fine The girl can't cook and she's always lying Could have been worse, they say Could have been worse, you know Could have been worse, just wait Yeah, it could have been worse, you'll see Her mama don't like me, she told me so In my business, sticks her nose She'll pop in, doesn't have a clue And she'll catch us doing the dippity-doo Could have been worse, they say Could have been worse, you know Could have been worse, just wait, yeah Could have been worse, you'll see Mama don't like me and she told me so In my business sticks her nose She'll pop in, doesn't have a clue Catch us doing the dippity-doo Well, it could have been worse, they say Could have been worse, you know Could have been worse, just wait Yeah, it could have been worse, you'll see She likes your wine, she's smoking these reefers all the time Yet so high, can't hardly stand And she can't remember that I'm her man Could have been worse, they say Could have been worse, you know Could have been worse, just wait Could have been worse, you'll see She's telling stories on all the friends Who's doing who to what, where and when Can't keep her mouth shut, that's for sure And if she hears some trash, just wants some more Well, it could have been worse, they say could have been worse, you know. Could have been worse, you know. That's right. Yes, my good gal left with another man. I won't be missing her raisin sand. She's good looking and she don't dress fine. A girl can't cook and she's always lying. But it could have been worse, they say. Could have been worse, you know. Could have been worse, just wait. Could have been worse, you'll see. Well, that's the song I wrote uh, for my first wife. And I wrote that for the new album, which was uh, called The Good Book. And uh, that's all originals, except for one I ripped off from Jazz Gillen because nobody knew who he was, and I had to write verses because all he had was a chorus, and he played harmonicas. I had to write a guitar part, so I copyrighted it. And uh, for years around the house, I'd say to the new wife, you know, she'd say, oh, did you have a good time at that uh, party? I said, well, it could have been worse. Uh, how was Thanksgiving? Mm, it could have been worse. And she was getting pissed off about it, but that's the song that got all the airplay on on the internet, that was the hit of the album. And it, it's kind of in the old style of uh, old 30s uh, finger-picking ragtimey blues, you know? It's not really ragtime, but it's got four chords instead of three. So we call it ragtime, I think that's why. And uh, it's fun to play because you, I, I'm not really, uh, I don't consider myself a guitarist. I'm an entertainer that plays guitar. And my influences were blues people like uh, Pink Anderson and Gary Davis. I traveled with Gary for a couple of years when I got out of the service in 1965. So that's the story on that song. I've been trying to write more. You know, everybody calls me a blues guitarist. The worst thing they could say at a, on a poster for a gig is blues guitarist. I mean, they expect Stevie Ray Vaughan. <laughs> But a lot of my old friends, Pink Anderson and uh, Roy Acuff, who I hung out with backstage at the Grand Ole Opry back when I was doing Nashville TV in the 80s, my country western period, pretty much like this with a bigger hat. And uh, they all worked medicine shows. They, they traveled around, and uh, Pink Anderson made records in 28. Never knew that his Pink Floyd was named after him in Floyd Council. He wouldn't have cared. But when I met him, he was recently retired. He had a stroke, but he did record again in the th 60s. He made a couple albums for Prestige. And then uh, he, he never joined the folk music uh, scene like Booker White and Gary Davis and those guys, Sonny and Brownie. But he was working, though. He told me he went on the road in 1909 with uh, 
Dr. Kerr's medicine show, worked for him for 36 years. And then he went out with uh, C.W. Blair's medicine show. And uh, he, the last medicine show was uh, Chief Thunderclouds. So a lot of these medicine shows were run by Indian chiefs, go figure, you know. But uh, when I met Pink, he uh, introduced me to his buddy, Pegleg Sam, that worked the medicine shows with him. And uh, their job was to drag the streets for a crowd to bring them up to the, the stage, which was usually on the back, the back of a truck, a flat, flatbed truck. And uh, the spring of 1970, Pegleg Sam had decided, because Pink was retired, I'd go out with uh, Chief Thunderclass Medicine Show, so I agreed to it. And I was all excited about that. I said, sure, I'll do that. And, and they'd do comedy routines and stuff like that. It's interesting entertainers. And then the, the Pink Anderson called me up on the phone and told me that the tour is off. I said, what happened? He said, the, the chief. Uh, I said, what? He said, his heart attacked him. I said, what are you talking about? He said, he's dead. I said, oh, I see. So there was no more medicine shows. But Peg Leg Sam, uh, at that point, when the medicine show business dried up, he was discovered by the folk music world. And the next time I saw him was at the Mariposa Folk Festival. And he, he was an interesting guy because he played harmonica in the shows and he danced. Peg Leg dancers were very popular in those days. I knew three of them. I don't have time to go into it right now. I wrote the song Step Right Up. It's a reference in it to Diamond Teeth Mary. Uh, she was a classic blues singer. Lived in Sarasota, Florida when we met her in a nursing home. But uh, she started to play uh, with my brother-in-law band, Rock Bottom and the Cutaways. And uh, she's mentioned in Levon Helm's song, uh, W.C. Walcott's Medicine Show, Lady with the Diamond Smile. 1949, she was a headliner of the Rabbit Foot Minstrel Show that toured through Arkansas. The young Levi must have snuck into the tent and seen it. Anyway, step right up, folks. You just got to see the magnificent magic of mysterious menagerie. It'll amaze, it'll amuse, it'll arouse and astound. No doubt the most bodacious show in town. Pack up your sorries, kiss away your cares. You won't have to worry no more. If you're tired and run down, the life ain't worth living no more. You can't hardly drag yourself out of bed like before. You got no health, no vitality, no vigor, no zest. The chief's Indian remedy elixir's the best. Don't hesitate, you don't want to be late. Get there before it's all gone, yeah. They got a peg-legged dancer and an Indian chief. A blue singing lady with diamonds in her teeth. They got a two-headed turtle man. You just got to see it. They got a chicken that can count to ten. No lie. Follow them down to the free show tonight. You don't want to miss it begin. Step right up, folks. You just got to see the magnificent, magical, mysterious menagerie. It'll amaze, it'll amuse, around and astound. No doubt the most bodacious show in town. Pack up your sorries, kiss away your cares. You won't have to worry no more. You gotta drink it neat, that's right, it ain't too sweet. Before long, you'll be back wanting more. The chief will make you believe the doc ain't there to deceive, and the story weaves will relieve you of some of your pain. All of your chains, but you'll be glad that you come to the show. So step right up, folks, you just got to see. A magnificent, magical, mysterious menagerie. That's that. Uh, yeah, I always wrote a few songs on my earlier albums. My first album, I wrote Traveling Man Blues. That was on Adelphi Records in 1970 we recorded. Uh, but I was always an interpreter of uh, my heroes. I always tried to sound like my heroes. And then one day realized they didn't have the talent to exactly sound like them, so you end up with your own style which is a good thing. And, uh, you know, folks would say to me sometimes there's a gig, like, uh, those two last songs were the best ones. Who's were those? And they'd say, uh, whoa, they were mine. And uh, I decided I wasn't going to make another record. It seemed like silly, you know, you're 65, 70 years old to, to do another Mississippi John Hurt cover. You just fill in space, really. I said, my fans don't need it. I got seven, eight albums out. So I'm going to wait till I write the songs. And every year on tour, people say, like, I have all your records. When are you going to make a, do a new one? I said, well, when I write the songs, it'll be out next year. And after about nine years of that, the new wife uh, 
we've been together 18 years now, she said, uh, you better do this new album. So uh, I locked myself in the room and, and uh, surprised myself. I wrote some good songs, like the, the good book. That blew my mind. But I had all those memories. I wanted to get all those people in the song. And, uh, and my guitar playing is not that versatile. I have a limited collection of chords and licks. But it sounded different than everything else I did. And that's the idea. But when you have a limited uh, kit of, of, of uh, basic guitar playing and you use it all the time, it becomes a distinct style. John Hartford told me that. I, I toured a lot with John Hartford, may he rest in peace, back in the last years of his career. Well, actually in the 80s. He told me he'd, he was being interviewed. I was sitting in his bus and he told the guy, the guy said, how'd you come up with such a unique style of playing the banjo? He said, well, I tried to sound like my heroes, but when I reached the limit of my talent, I realized that th this is my style. And I, and I encourage that. It's silly to sound just like your heroes. So I'm gonna do another one I wrote, if that's okay. And, and now traveling with Gary Davis, of course, I, I got a couple of his big churchy chords in my songs. Uh, Gary had a lot of students, and a lot of them can play exactly like him. And, and I was very depressed that I couldn't. But I don't think I had the IQ. <laughs> but I picked up enough to be on the road for 40 years after his death and make a living. That's pretty good. I wrote this song. I call it The Good Book. And I think Gary would have liked it. Gary died May 5th, 1972. Of course, there's that new film out by Woody Mann and Trevor Lawrence, the documentary called Harlem Street Singer that uh, I have a little cameo in, and Bob Weir's in it, and Yorma Kalkin and all them guys. So that's pretty exciting. It's a beautiful film. It's on Amazon now, but it won a lot of film contests and what have you when it came out. But this one here I call The Good Book. It starts over with Gary's big uh, G chord. I think that's a G chord. I, I played this for Robert Lockwood. He was a friend of mine. Before he passed, he was like 91. He said, uh, what's that chord there? I thought it's Reverend Davis' big C, he used to call it. He said, Reverend Davis, he must have been one of blankety blank blank preacher. I said, yeah, he was. He said, and he could pick a guitar, I bet. I said, yeah, he could. He said, let me see that chord again. That's the big C, and then we move it around. Now, I teach at Yorma Calkins Guitar Camp some, and most of the students know more than I do. But uh, they know, you know, two Paul Simons and three Yormas and six of those, and they really don't know what they're doing. But I tell them, uh, I don't know why you're here, but my secret is to, if you know 12 chords and three ways to make them, you, you got a handle on it. You don't really need much more than that. I, I don't go for, uh, virtuosity is not, uh, doesn't have much to do with blues, really. I read that in a Grail Marcus book years ago called uh, Mystery Train, and that stuck with me. I like that. Okay, we'll try to do this song for you. One of my biggest thrills was singing, uh, I went to church with Reverend Davis and Mrs. Davis. I had to drive him there, of course, because he was blind and she didn't drive. And after three hours into the service, she asked what I'd like to do for him. Almost had a heart attack. And uh, everybody turned around to look at the white boy back there. And Mrs. Davis, uh, Mother Davis, she said, you come up here and sing one of your nice little songs Brother Davis taught you. And it was a thrill when I hit into that Gary Davis song. The place went berserk. Of course, it's not on film. Step 
step along the way on your journey to the stars. Don't you be a cheater. Don't be telling lies. Straight and narrow path you're on leads you to the prize. To the children, the old and feeble too. Don't be doing to others what you don't want done to you. Mind your own business, keep singing a happy song. A soldier in God's army always knows what's right from wrong. My mama told me, my papa told me too. The good book's got the answers, they will tell you what to do. The good book's got the answers, you just wait and see. The good book's got the answers there, just for you and me. Now don't be wanting what's not yours, give thanks you got a lot. You never miss what you don't have, get from them that's got. Fussing and a fighting is not the righteous way. You just best be quiet if you've got nothing good to say. My mama told me, my papa told me too. The good books got the answers, they will tell you what to do. The good books got the answers, you just wait and see. Good books got the answers there just for you and me. Good books got the answer. <laughs>